All right, folks. So let's take a look at what we got so far. We have a single page website here. We have a login thing on the left that doesn't do anything. We got a thing on the right that's just a list of uh, meows, as we call it, instead of tweets, because uh, that's probably copyright. And let's take a look at what files we got. We got index.html. We have style.scss. Oh, sorry, style.css. <laughs> we'll get to CSS later. Um, and in this folder here, we just downloaded this folder, and it's got Bootstrap, which is um, just some layout stuff. You can see the glyphicons. We were using some of the glyphicons from earlier. But that's pretty much it. We just made index.html and style, and Bootstrap we downloaded. So what we're going to do next is very interesting. We're going to actually generate these this list of tweets using JavaScript instead of copying and pasting it here on the website. So this is a step that uh, a lot of people don't take. So you're about to enter some unknown territory here. And what we're going to use is Angular. Angular is the library of choice. So I'm going to stick with Angular 1 for now. Angular 2 is still a little uh, beta. So let's see, let's do the stable. Um, minified means it's just like smushed together, so you can't really read it, but it's like a smaller, faster to download file. And uh, let's download it. All right, so we got angular.min.js. And let's go back to our file system here, and let's just plop it right there. So again, it's cutting off the uh, file extensions. I swear to God, this isn't my computer. It's a friend's computer, but uh, normally you could see it there. So the first thing we do now that we downloaded Angular is uh, include it. So script, uh, yeah, type equals text equals JavaScript. I just hit tab there, by the way. I was open carrot script, and I hit tab, and Sublime automatically typed everything else. And then SRC for the source. And since it's in the same folder, I could just type angular.min.js. And there you go. That's it. You got Angular. So let's see what that allows us to do. Um, let's start writing some script. Oops. I just didn't enter there. So let's start writing some JavaScript. Uh, you know, for those of you who don't know, you could just say var my var equals hello. And then you can do uh, console.log uh, my var. Um, you save that. Um, oops, let me go back to the website here so I can refresh that. There's no errors so far. So I do um, on Mac, it's command option J. On Windows, let's find out option alt J. Nope. I don't know what it is. So you could just right click inspect. This works on both computers. And then just put it down here. And then I like to go to the console. So as you can see, it printed hello. Again, var, the name of my variable. It could be anything you want. A string, it's called. Anything between quotes is a string. And then console.log to output it to this console down here. So let's refresh the page. Every time I refresh it, it outputs it. So let's get right into it. Um, so instead of a single string, let's say var meows equals an array that's crazy right so now I could hit enter go up hit tab and I could just start typing stuff like hello comma you know array is multiple elements in case you forgot hi boom and you know what I can do console.log meows Enter Sublime automatically fills in some of this stuff for us because as you're typing, if you didn't notice that, it scans the file as you type and says, "Oh, you used meows before," so it suggests it so you can it helps you type faster. So I might be doing that. And refresh, and here we go. Here's our array of two strings. So what do we do with this? So what we're gonna do is take all of these meows and put them in that array, and then we're gonna make this HTML here a little bit shorter by using the JavaScript. So let's copy. Let's put these guys in the array. Copy. This is going to be so much better. It's going to be so much shorter. Copy. The 
forget your comma, quotes, paste, and lastly, copy, comma, quotes, paste. So we have a variable which is an array of four items, each item being a string. And what this allows us to do is say, hey, you know what? I'm going to delete all this because I'm going to have JavaScript automatically make those guys. So this is a big step here, so let's pay close attention. So the way Angular works is you have to, step one, initiate your Angular app. Step two, make a controller and have the controller do stuff. In this case, we're going to have the controller basically just set a variable. That's pretty much it. So step one is initiate the app. So usually people do in their HTML tag, they say ng-app equals, I'll call it mittens. This is the name of our site. No one's going to see this value on the front page. It's just going to be for our coding purposes. So, um, and down here you say, ang I usually, just, I set a variable, let's call it app. That's what everyone calls it. Just, I'm going to hand wave over that one for now var app equals and the code is angular dot what is the code I don't even know actually offhand let's let's check the uh, let's check the docs angular initialize app see even I forget some stuff sometimes angular two ways to initialize an angular app that sounds kind of right and then angular dot module okay that's what it was angular dot module and then now this name here is to match, so mittens. And then, so this is a function, module is a function, and the result of this function is an Angular app. And we're gonna save it in this variable. So let's clean this up a little bit, just so you don't lose me here. We're going var app equals angular.module mittens. And the second argument to the module function is a, it's a list of, of dependencies. We don't need any right now, and we can talk about that later. The second thing you do is make your controller. So you can say app dot um, controller equals function. See what I did there? I type F U N and then I hit enter and it uh, sublime automatically typed it out for me. And a function is basically the word function, the name of the function, which is basically um, People usually call it like mittens. I, 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 people usually call it something, the name of the thing, and then like CTRL. So mittens control, CTRL short for controller. Um, I think they changed their uh, their recommendation on that lately, but uh, that's what I still use. And then argument. Um, I'll explain this later, but basically you insert this scope variable. And then what we can do is say dollar sign scope equals this or actually no sorry scope dot meows equals this array i'm going to actually cut this and paste it here and i'm going to indent it so what the hell did we just do um let me just make sure i'm doing this right actually i actually don't remember how to uh do a controller to be honest app dot controller okay yeah that's right i mean you're supposed to do an array here so the first element is the scope and the second element is the function. But uh, I think you don't need to do that. Uh, hopefully I don't get proven wrong though. So scope.meows is just a variable. Scope is an object. So in, in JavaScript you have objects, you have arrays, you have variables. So you can have an object dot a property. Meows is the, uh, one of the properties. It's the same thing as a variable. So it can be an array, a string, a number. So. Um, and, and what scope allows us to do in Angular is is do things with the with the front end. It's like do things with the website. I can I can I'll show you right now actually. So what I can do right here on the website is say let me delete this. Do these open squiggly brackets and close squiggly brackets, and in between I can put the name of the scope variable. I can say meows. Save it. Let's see how that looks. Oh, that did not work. Meows. Scope.meows. Oh, I know why. 
because I forgot step two. Step one was initialize the mittens app. Step two really should be, uh, you can put it on the body, um, but basically if you put ng-controller, you can put the name that we specified, which is mittens, oops. Mittens control, save that. Um, but really you can put this ng controller on any of these elements. It can go on any element, but um, just like any other HTML tag, it surrounds um, what it, what's inside it. So we really want everything inside here to be part of this application that we're making. So I'm just gonna put it on the body. I could probably put it up here on the HTML thing here too, but I don't think that's recommended. So let's go back here, see if that worked. Uh, function undefined and control. Okay, maybe I was wrong. Maybe it does have to be in this format. So what they do is you have to do it in this format here. So it has to be an array. App dot controller. Oh no, sorry, I have the wrong controller is a function. I am doing things wrong here. I'm teaching the wrong thing. Mittens C T R L. So ignore everything I said up to this point for the controller. It's really this. This is the correct syntax. And then lastly, the name thing here. So what did I just do? So just like module, controller is also a function. And the first argument to the function is the name of your controller. And then the second argument is the actual, the meat of it, the, the functionality. And um, usually what you're gonna put is dollar sign scope which allows you to interact with the, uh, the, web, the web page. And then we're setting this variable. So this should do the trick. There shouldn't be any errors when I run this. Refresh, there you go. So you can see it outputs basically the array. Um, but this is obviously not what we want. So what Angular lets you do is this thing uh, called ng-repeat, and this is what it is. So what do we want to repeat here? We want to repeat this H3 block. Like this whole block of code, we want to repeat this for each thing in this array, for each tweet, for each meow. We want to repeat this block of code. So on the top level element of the block of code, the H3 here, it surrounds the span, it surrounds the other stuff. Um, we say H3 ng repeat equals, and then the syntax is meow in meows. So this thing, I just made that up, but I'm gonna call it meow to keep it simple. And then meows relates to scope.meows. It's the same variable. When you're actually working in the HTML, you don't put scope dot. You only put scope dot if you're in this function here. Again, this is things like this are changing nowadays. Like people are saying you should put like self, I think, um, but I mean, this works. So let's just do this for now. And so for each item in this meows array, it's gonna basically copy and paste this code for you in real time. And then down here, um, what you do is say meow, basically this item in the array. So let's see how this looks. Boom, there you go. Your first Angular app. So again, to go over it real quick again, we added Angular, then we added some JavaScript. And it's inside the JavaScript, we made an app variable. We use angular.module function to initialize this variable. We just call this function and it basically returns an Angular app that you can then play with. And then down here you say app.controller to start defining some functionality. In this case we're defining the mittens controller which consists of this function. And all this function does is set a variable. And what's special about this variable is that it uses the scope thing here which lets it which lets us use it down here in the HTML. And one more time, um, we have ng app up here, which you basically need for any Angular app, you need to have that at the top. And um, you also need to have a controller here. Um, so, and the controller has to be nested inside this app. So this HTML element here surrounds this entire page and this controller is part of this element. So, um, it's all related, baby. It's just, you have your app, which surrounds your controllers. Just like in the JavaScript, you, you initialize your app and then you do app.controller. I can do this multiple times. I can do app.controller, mittens control, app.controller, um, profile controller, because we'll have a profile too. Um,
So yeah, and then once we do that, once we define that variable, go down here, ng repeat. ng repeat lets us not have to paste this, copy paste this a million times, and just lets us put the, uh, the item right there. And that's that, you got your first Angular app. Um, next up is uh, letting us do this on the server side. What's a server? Stay tuned to find out. See you later.